Welcome to Season 7 of Having a Western Supermare. No funky intro today, we now mean business. In the last episode, we got promoted from League 1 up to the Championships. That is three promotions on a trot from a National League to League 2 to League 1 in three seasons. We are on, we're on the up, but now it comes down to the nitty gritty. The Championship, we need to stay in this league massively. Money-wise, helps as well. Hopefully, we might get a takeover at some point because our board does not like spending money on anything. I ask for stuff, it gets rejected every time. We do have a massive season ahead of us. I'm not expecting to be in the playoffs or winning the league. Not a chance in hell. I would like a mid-table finish. We have spent some money. We have sold some players. Also, players have gone out on loan and contracts have run out. So we did bring in 16 more players. Another 16 players. But we have sold players. The first person we sold was Steve Harris. Apparently, Newcastle wanted him. God knows why. But Steve Harris has gone to Newcastle. I don't see how he's going to be any good for them. He went for... Fifteen million pound. Also, Ted Curd wanted to leave. He wouldn't renegotiate his contract. His contract was running out at the end of the season. He wasn't going to renew it. He wanted to leave. He's been fantastic keeper for us for three seasons. He went to Watford for two point two million. Made a profit of two point two million. Got for nothing. What a keeper he has been. So, with a bit of money to spend, we did spend it kind of wisely. Our biggest transfer was 9.75, but we didn't spend 9.75. It was installments and add-ons and God knows what. And we signed Dick Adulhai. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. Let me know in the comments down below. More than likely, I'm probably not. We're a 21-year-old centre midfielder, Crystal Palace, who are in our league. And he looks fantastic. And he has the potential to be a Premier League standard player. To give him game time, he will improve, and possibly we might make a profit on him if we decide to sell him. But he's 21 years old, Englishman, set midfielder. We needed another one. Our next signing is Kian Best from Bristol City for a fee of 1.9 million. Bristol City got relegated down to League One last year, so they send most of their players. 24 year old defender. We need another centre back. He's okay. He's not tall. He's five foot eleven, but height doesn't mean nothing as a centre back these days. He's decent. He's a good. I would. He said a good League One player, potentially a good Championship player. Our reputation is not high enough yet. Hopefully that will change with a couple of steady seasons in the Championship for players to want to join us. So it's, at the moment it's quite difficult. We are still pretty much signing League One players at the moment. But 1.9 million spent on him. Next is a goalkeeper. 1.1 million from Coventry, Max Merrick. He's a backup goalkeeper at the end of the day. We have signed another one on a free transfer. I'll come to him in a minute. But he do a right National League goalkeeper, apparently. Could be a good championship player. 23 years old. And the last signing we made with money is Malcolm Giles. 20-year-old winger slash striker. Signed for a fee of 450k from Fleetwood. He looks a right League One player. Potential be championship standard. Played five games, hasn't scored yet, but I think you can play on the wing. But definitely one for the future, like most of my signs are for the future. Zane Mont Lewis was a free transfer, the 25 year old. Released by Leicester. Centre back, he's a good, solid centre back. Six foot two. Unfortunately, he's actually injured at the moment, and he's out for a couple of weeks. But he's one of our main centre backs. Matthew Cox is Kurd's replacement, a great championship goalkeeper. He was a free transfer, he was released from Wigan. Has been around the block a little bit, but a very experienced goalkeeper. Next line in the Saxon early, a 26-year-old defender slash DM. He's all right. He was released by Crew, I want to say. He was. League One. Overall, he's not a bad player. He's valued at 2.1 million to 4.4. Give him some game time. He might improve a bit more. Tyrell Ashcroft was our next signing. A right back. Valiantly 10 million. He was a free transfer. Released by Ipswich Town. After they signed him for 4.3 million three seasons ago. He's now come and join us. Decent right back. Will do well for us, I hope. Lewis Orford is our next signing. He was a free transfer. He was released 
by West Ham after a couple of seasons on loan over in Holland. Decent midfielder. Will do well. It says decent League One. Could be potential of a decent championship player. If that's the case, fantastic. Lenny Dennison is the next one in. He was a free transfer. He's gone back out on loan. He's actually on loan at Colchester to get his development up. Potentially a championship striker. A free transfer. He was released from uh, Brighton. Could do well for us. Jarrett Colback is another one. He was released by Newcastle. He's gone out on loan to Worthen. Potential of a championship player as a centre-back. Get him out. Get him at game time. It's important at this age. But he'll do right. Six foot six. Not many players are going to be out jumping him. From West Ham, we've signed Richard Trafford, a right winger. Looks okay. Decent league one. We're giving him the game time. He's on development list for West Ham. He's going to be a quality little player, I think. Asad Ali from Leicester is our next sign on loan for the season. Decent player. Most of our scouts reckon they are League One, but our scouts ain't the greatest, so we need to improve our scouts as well. I have just asked for more scouts. And it was agreed after I had to have a word of them. Because originally it was rejected. I needed to fight my battles, and yeah, I've now got one more scout. I've got seven scouts now. Not bad. Aidan Moore, a left midfielder from Norwich. Looks all right. It does say good National League player. He's not the greatest. I think we give him a hell of a lot of game time because he is our only left midfielder. He will do well. Next, we have Herbie James on loan from Tottenham, a winger. Looks very, very decent. Potentially a good Premier League player. But at the moment, they're saying a good League Two player. He has played six games and scored one goal already. So we're going to give him game time. We're going to give all these youngsters game time because we have got a very small squad. And our final transfer in, Lee Dilly from Newcastle on loan for the season. A striker and he is going to be world class. Let me just tell you this now. He's valued at nearly 20 million at the age of 19 years old. He's got 14 finishes, 14 composure, 15 pace, 15 acceleration, off the ball 13, determination 15, work weight 14, technique 15. He is a fantastic striker, but mostly we signed defenders this season. I'm not gonna lie. I thought we'd be solid at the back, we might nick one or two. Now, when I say one or two, like one or two goals, in the first game in the championship, we smashed Redden 7-1. Not bad at all. So, and in saying that, it's not been a fantastic start to the season. Don't think, oh my God, we're going to walk it again. We're not. Definitely not. Next game, we drew two all with Fleetwood in the EFL first round, beat them on penalties. We then lost to West Brom 3-0. Lost to Hull 2-1. 1-2-1 one against Coventry but then lost to Huddersfield 2-1. And in the second round of the EFL Cup, we beat Watford 3-2, which then sets up a home tie against Manchester United. Money, money, money. And in our last game, we won 1-0 against Southampton, which means we're currently sitting in ninth spot. Three wins, three defeats in six games. And the bookies have us as second favourites to go down. The only reason why Luton are down... 24th is because they were reducted 12 points for going into administration and they've already got seven back so they're on minus five if we can stay clear of this relegation zone we are perfect for this season we build on what we get next season and squad wise we're going to use the same tactic we've used all the way through the 4-3-3 you know it by now and if i pick our best 11 this is what comes out Cox in goal, Ashcroft, Mon Luis, Best, Ali in defence, Simon Lee, Dick Abdul High. That's a name and a half. I'm going to mess that one up a few times. I'll tell you that now. Aidan Moore, Richard Trafford, Sunat Bell, who just signed a three year deal, and Lee Dilly up front. I don't know what to expect. I honestly don't know what to expect this season. To be mid table at the moment is great after six games. There's a lot of games to be played, there's a long way to go. Hopefully, we'll stay clear of that relegation. Right, let's simulate Season 7 and see what we can do in the Championship. In the third round of the EFL Cup, we beat Manchester United 2-1. Soon up, Bell getting the score underway in the fourth minute. 
before Terence Miles made it two number four half time. Santiago Gimenez in the 91st minute gave Manchester United a consolation and we go through to the fourth round. We beat Bolton 2 0, two goals from Lee Dilly. We then lost 4 2 to Birmingham. Scoring got underway in the third minute for a goal from Dick Abdali. But Liam Delap got Burnham's equaliser in the 15th minute. Burnham then took the lead in the 32nd minute through Donovan. And made it 3 1 on the 44th minute through Baker Bartley. We did get a goal back in injury time through, Michael, through Malcolm Giles. But in the 78th minute, Donovan got his second and Birmingham's fourth, and all three points went to Birmingham. And in the league, we're sitting just outside the playoffs of 15 points. But a massive shock, as soon as Bell has broken his leg and will be out of action for six months. We wish him well, he's definitely going to be missed. We started off well with a 4-1 win over Palace. A 3-0 win over Ipswich. For a tight game against Sheffield United, losing 3-2 at Bramall Lane. Malcolm Giles in the 30th minute got a score underway in this one. Before Jay Morgan got Sheffield United's equaliser in three minutes later. We took the lead in the 40th minute through Lee Dilly. And then in injury time of the first half, Jenny got Sheffield United's equaliser. And then Tom Davis with the winner in the 82nd minute made all three points go to Sheffield United. And we were very unlucky against Chelsea in the fourth round of the EFL Cup, going out from a penalty from shoulder up. And in the league, we are three points behind Crystal Palace after we smashed them earlier on in the month. We lost to Rotherham 1-0, before beating Swansea 1-0 with a Joshua Dufus goal in the 90th minute in a hard-fought battle against the Welsh team, but we can't wave all three points. We then lost 1-0 to Burnley, and 2-0 to Peterborough. Peterborough got a score on the way in the fourth minute through Samuel Severa. And then Jaden Dance put the nail in the coffin in the 32nd minute, making it a 2-0. And a poor month for us overall. As we only pick up four points in the whole of the month and sit just inside the playoffs. We took a 0-0 draw up and down against Millwall. Before smashing Luton, 5-0. Then we beat QPR, 3-0. Herbie James in the second minute of injury time in the first half with the goal in this one. And then two minutes from time, Saxon Early made it 2-0. Before Malcolm Giles in the 91st minute made it 3-0 and all three points came to Western. And then in an absolute cracker of a game, we beat Cardiff 3-2. Cardiff taking the lead in the 23rd minute through Shuttleworth. Before Harvey James got equalised in the 31st, we then take the lead through Simon Lee in the 43rd and made it 3-1 in the 50th through Richard Trafford. Cardiff got one back there through Robbie Thomas in the 72nd minute but weren't enough. And in the league we're now sitting second again, two points behind Crystal Palace. What a month we have had. Third round of the FA Cup, we beat Blimmer 4-0. Before a top of the table clash against Crystal Palace and we come away with a 3-0 win. Simon Lee in the 7th minute got a score another win in this one. Before Malcolm Giles in the 19th minute made it 2-0. And in the 66th minute Lee Dilly did this to make it 3-0 and all three points came to Western. But then drew 0-0 with Derby. Before losing to Premier League Aston Villa in the 4th round of the FA Cup. Caitlin Young got a score underway for Aston Villa in the 35th minute and then Jacob Ramsey made it 2-0 in the 50th minute and then we were chasing our tails but we did manage to get a goal back in the 63rd minute through Dick not that one but we go out of the FA Cup in the 4th round and in the league we are now top of the table what the hell was going on with this team we beat Sheffield Wednesday 3-0 
before smashing Southampton 4 0. Zaymon Lewis in the 23rd minute got a score underway, but two minutes later, Trafford made it 2 0. In the 85th minute, Mark Haynes got us our third. Before Joshua Dufus in the 87th minute wrapped up the scoring and three vital points come our way. We then had another tough game against Stoke winning 2 0. And we are top of the league. It is definitely going to be a two horse race. It was goals galore at Turf Moor, a full all draw. Dan Nil with a goal for Burnley in the sixth minute. Before making it 2 0 was Christophe Beru in the 20th minute. We got a goal back from Stuart Bell in the 27th minute. Welcome back. Malcolm Giles made it 2 2 in the 33rd minute. And then got a second in the 43rd minute, meaning we were only 3 2 up at half time. Simon Lee then got made it 4 2 in the 57th minute. For Christophe Bayou, got a second goal in the 75th minute. Sergio Pinier in the 90th plus 9 minute got Burnley's equaliser. We smashed West Brom 3 0. And we followed that up with a 3 0 against Redden. Lee Dillon in the 24th minute, making it 1 0. We saw Sunup Bell made it 2 0 in the 37th minute. And Lee Dilly got his second goal in the 43rd minute, made it 3 0 at half time. It finished 3 0. We get all three points, which puts us still top of the table with six games remaining, and we have a playoff place secured. Going into the final few games, we beat Coventry 3 0. Before losing 1 0 to Hull. Beating Luton 2 0, but then losing to Middlesbrough 2 1. And the penultimate game of the season, we smashed Millwall 4 1. Trafford in the 22nd minute, making it 1 0. For Lee Dilly, made it 2 0 just before the half time whistle. Scott Twain got a goal back for Millwall from the penalty spot in the 61st minute. But Simon Lee secured our two extra goals in the 65th minute. And in the 89th minute, Trafford wrapped up the score and we get three very vital three points. So with one game to go, us and Crystal Palace have the same amount of points. Whoever wins on the final day of the season will be champions. We face QPR, knowing that a win will secure the championship. QPR take a lead in the 27th minute through Valvez. But three minutes before half time, Richard Trafford got us an equaliser. And that's how it stayed till half time. Second half, Lee Dilly, he's had a fantastic season, put us 2 1 up in the 52nd minute. Before making it 3 1 in the 65th minute, and a great team goal all round. But there's drama still to happen. In the 95th minute, QPR got their second good one. And that was how it finished. Ladies and gentlemen, somehow this team has gone on to win the championship after being predicted to finish 23rd. <laughs> no effing way have we just done that how have we just done that we were bookies favourites to finish 23rd after Luton we've gone on and won the championship which means next season we are playing Premier League football what the hell has happened really I'm in massive shock 10 defeats Five draws, 31 wins, 98 points. Crystal Palace ran us ragged right to the end, right to the final game of the season. And Burnley get themselves promoted through the playoffs. I just, oh, I just don't know how. How have we done that? Because this squad, they're not brilliant. They're not a fantastic squad. And also with... Sunot Bell, our best player, breaking his leg 
out for five months after breaking his leg in training. I thought, oh no, here we go. But the boys stepped up. The other player stepped up, Lee Dilly. What a signing he is. 19 years old, he's now a leading championship player, potentially a Premier League standard striker. He's improved massively. 18 league goals, 19 in all, 18 in 34 games in the league. 19 in total for the season. Had an absolute great season and is our top goal scorer. Malcolm Giles, National League member. He was national. Our scout said he was a National League player. Now they say he's a good championship player with the potential of being a Premier League standard player. We signed him from Fleetwood for 450k. He's now valued at nearly 9 million after one season. What a season he 14 goals, 20 years old. Richard Trafford got a goal in the final game of the season. On loan from West Ham, a white right winger. Very, very good. Made at need 10 million. Might be worth looking into him next season. Herbie James, another loanee from Tottenham. Championship player now, not a League One player. Not League One, League Two player. He's a championship rated player now after a head of a season. He got 11 goals and three assists. Simon Lee, the man who I think is defender, but keep playing it in midfield. Now, I don't need 5 million. He's still a good League Two player, but he's had a hell of a season. 10 goals, 7 assists. We signed him for 775k. And he's valued at E5. Not bad, not bad. Joshua Dufus didn't get much game time. He wants to leave. He did want to leave because I couldn't do his contract. His contract does did run out, but obviously we, we knew it now. But he's valued at least 7 million. Eight goals, two games. Soon at Bell, eight goals, two assists. Injury hit season, I'm afraid, but still got that decent Premier League potential. But he is a good League Two player, obviously, because of injuries, his progression has halted. Hopefully, next season, he will be leading us up front. Only right he does. He's been here, what, four seasons, a free transfer. He's valued at 10 million now. And it's only right that he leads us out next season. Saxon Early got seven goals and three assists. Dick Abdurai. I, I, I probably butchered that as name. Butchered him. Our main signing in the summer transfer window for nine million is now valued at 21 million. And look at those attributes. He's getting better and better. And next season, he will be playing Premier League football. Six goals, seven assists. Zane Monluis. A free transfer around about now 13 and a half million. He's done well. He's done well. You think most of these players are free transfers and loan signings and cheap money because they're all English players. I've got no other player. All I've got is English. And next season in the Premier League, I've got to look for English players. Assist wise, 18 from Tyrell Ashcroft. He's valued at 22 million. We signed him on a free transfer. If someone comes in for him, I'm taking the 20 million, you know? 15 assists from Giles. Kieran Best, defender. Bought from Bristol City for 1.9 million. Valued at six and a half, and he's had a really good season. Two goals, 11 assists. But competitions where we were knocked out in the FA Cup fourth round by Aston Villa. Obviously, we played them next year. And we were knocked out in the Carabao Cup by Chelsea in the fourth round as well, losing 1-0 on that one. Some big teams in that Premier League, which was just won by Liverpool. Relegated at Brighton, but they have got Europa League, so I'm guessing they won the FA Cup. Fair play. But no Everton, no Leicester, no Brighton, so we could ransack their squads and have a look and see what we got. Transfer budget-wise, we have about 22 million. So, not massive. It's enough to bring in like four or five players. And if we can find some young uns and some lone players as well, in obviously English, we'll give it a go. I don't expect us to stay up in the Premier League next season. Definitely not. And here is a massive weird thing from our chairman. We've just been promoted to the Premier League. And then I get an email saying this. Our planned stadium expansion has unfortunately had to be scrapped. 
Although the board have promised money would be made available, they no longer see the importance of such an investment. Hang on, we're playing Premier League football now like this season, mate. The stadium in West Supermare was built in 2000. The stadium has room for 5,750 supporters. With potential capacity, with the potential to be expanded to capacity of 6,000. Do you honestly think 6,000 seater stadium is going to be good enough for a Premier League team? We're going to entice these young English players, these English players to come in and play for Western in the Premier League. Might not just be a Premier League, it could be Europa League in a couple of years' time. Europa Conference League, Champions League. That's the aim. As soon as I win the Champions League with this squad using only English players, series is done. But to have a stadium of 6,000 and go, it's, it's 30 years old. It, there you go, it's 30 years old. Mr. Chairman, please, please, please expand the bloody stadium. Let's get some more money into the club. More money means I can spend, basically. Because finances, we're not, we're 10 million, we've just got 10 million in the bank, which is not bad. Net debt, we haven't got transfer debt is five million. That's nothing. We get we get more than that next season through sponsorship being in the Premier League. Can you imagine if we get to the, a Europa League spot or Europa Conference League? Oh, better off Champions League. All I know is I have got a massive free season ahead of me. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I was not expecting this, not at all. Honestly, I thought we'd be just outside. Um, relegation zone. I really did. So to get to win the league is wow. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below what your predictions will be for next season. Surely not Premier League winners. Above relegation's got to be it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you look after yourself, and I will see you all in the Premier League with Western Supermare using only English players. Wow. Just wow. Toodles.